Welcome to another unit in this Excel course. This time we are officially talking about how to get the limit of a Markov chain. On the other hand, well, while this topic is officially on Markov chains, we're going to talk about two additional problems here, which is like solving linear systems of equations with Excel and how to get eigenvalues. Because the Markov chain problem simplifies very easily to, well, consider the transition matrix, which is the matrix here. So the matrix that if I start in A and I change to, or remain in A, is 70%, that I switch to B is 20%, that I switch to C is 8%, and as I switch to condition D is 2%. So that's what we call a Markov transition matrix. And I want to know where, if this transition process is continuing, 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 I will end up in the end. So if the transition process as given here has to continue for an indefinite time period, what will be more or less the distribution of situations A, B, C and D after an infinite amount of periods? So how many percent of all the observations, all the objects, all the things living in this context would be in class A, in class B, C and D. Well, to answer this, simply we would have to only consider the eigenvalues of the transpose of this transition matrix. Well, sounds pretty easy, pretty straightforward. However, there's only a big downside. Excel does not calculate eigenvalues on its own. So, while it's pretty easy to actually get the transpose of this matrix, well, we could simply go here, use the function transpose, which I introduced in the section on matrices. Let's apply this to all matrix here. Then I have a small problem because I need to apply or also give him the space he needs to calculate this. And voila, I get my transpose matrix. So this part is pretty easy and straightforward. But now I want to have the eigenvalues of this matrix. So what I, do I actually do to get them? Well, that's actually a problem. So what we are going to do here is try to find some kind of roundabout way to get this. Well, for this, we can first recall what are actually eigenvalues. Imagine I have a matrix A and I want to have the eigenvalues. Then basically I'm asked to find a solution to this system of equations here. Matrix A times the vector of eigenvalues x equals the vector of eigenvalues. Or, in other words, this works for all eigenvalues itself. Okay, when I have this, I can simply reformulate this as ax minus x being equal to zero. So far, so good. Now I have x and x here, so I can factor the x out. When I'm doing this, I however need to consider that here I need to add an imaginary identity matrix because I can only subtract a matrix from another matrix. So here I have I A minus the identity matrix then times x equal to zero. So basically I'm asked about finding the kernel of the matrix A minus the identity matrix. Okay, so getting the eigenvalues reduces to solving this linear system of equations. So the question then would be, how do I solve a linear system of equations in Excel? And we get from one problem to another problem. But here we actually have a small help in the so-called solver function. Well, if you read the description here, that's on finding optimal values. So it's on mathematical optimization. Here I don't want to optimize anything, I just want to solve a linear system of equation. So we can trick him into solving the system for us by thinking he's actually solving an optimization problem. How are we going to do this? Well, first off, we need to get this new matrix, this A minus 1. 
So I need to subtract from this matrix the unit matrix. Unit matrix or identity matrix is the matrix oops, where only on the diagonal I have a 1, else I only have zeros. So I need to subtract this matrix down here, oops, this matrix, from the matrix up here. This would result then in this value minus this one. And I can just fill this here and here, giving me this part. So this is the part A minus 1. I will just copy the names of the different situations. And well, here I need to solve the system of equations that this is equal to zero. However, solver doesn't work this way. So I need to have also the left side of this constraint. So what I'm going to do here is say down here, I'm actually putting my vector x. So my different solutions. So here the x. And what I'm doing here is actually calculating the left side of the equation. So here I'm going with this row times this vector. So calculating the value of the first row. And I can simply do this here with the so-called sum product. For this I se select this row and then the vector of all the x values. So it's like a vector product. I'm doing this here, well I get zero Of course, I haven't entered values yet, so if I enter some values, this will be different. Okay, so I'm doing this for all of the different rows, always keeping, as a second part, my values in the yellow field here. So I'm fixating the values in the yellow part, then use autofill to calculate this in the same motion. So actually what I now want to do is find, have Excel find values for the yellow part so that what's written here on the left is equal to what's written on the right. Okay, how can I achieve this? For this, that's where I use my small trick. I'm doing one additional thing. I'm adding an artificial constraint. The artificial constraint simply is, I take the sum of all my decision variables, all my possible eigenvalues, and they should be equal to 1. Okay, why to 1? Because, well, I'm looking for the one solution to this system of equations here, which gives me the share of A, B, C, and D. And well, the shares need to add up to 1, to 100%, while still fulfilling these constraints. So actually I'm solving this linear system of equation here. Okay, back to how do I actually solve this? That's here the so-called solver, as I mentioned. If you don't have the solver here, you might have to activate this via your options, via your add-in options, because the solver is only in add-in, in Excel add-in. If you want to know a bit more on Excel solver, you can also revisit the corresponding course on solver. Here, however, oops, I need to go to this point. I already have some old information. I will just erase this, so then we can start again. Well, the problem is it's an optimization tool. So he wants to have something which he can optimize. Well, let's just give him something to optimize. Let's say take this field here and maximize this. Make this as large as possible. We could also minimize this so it doesn't matter. This is just artificial for him to have something to optimize. Then we need to select the decision variables. So by changing, that's the yellow part put here. That's where he needs to make the changes. 
And finally, I have my constraints where I just can add. That's the left side of the constraint. So that's my left side here. That's the right side. So that's my right side here. And in the middle, I have equality. So I go to equal to. Click on OK. Now I'm good to go. In particular, if I leave this box checked, I will only get positive results. So I can't get a weight of minus 8, a share of minus 8%, minus 50%, stuff like this. I can only get a value larger than 0%. And well, due to this constraint, I can also get at most a value of 100%, so of 1. So all the shares will be somewhere between 0 and 1, or between 0% and 100%. So I could use the GRG nonlinear, I could use the simplex LP. Here I'm staying with what I already have. And then I just click solve. He tells me Sober found a solution. Well, here, that's my solution. That's the share of group one in the final situation. Share of group B, share of group C, share of group D. If I add them all up, I get to 100%. And well, let's have a look here at the constraints. So at this point, I have some strange values on the left. Well, this is more or less e to the power of minus 17. Well, EXO works iteratively. So at this point, if I use the GRG nonlinear, I usually don't get a zero here. I only get very, very, very small values. This is more or less X's well, uh, way of writing down very, very small values. So whenever you see something like e to the power of minus 17 or something other, so e to minus, and then there's at least a two-digit number, this basically means it's zero. For all practical purposes, this is zero. So all the conditions are fulfilled. So those solutions solve this linear system of equation and their valid weights or valid shares as they add up to 100 so 100 or 100 percent or one so that's the si final situation what my system will converge to the interesting thing in this context i can directly take a look what happens if some parts in my transition matrix change so if here, I no longer have 0%, but 5%. For this, I have 5% here as well. So you see, at this point, those constraints are no longer fulfilled. So I have to just run Solver again. So just click here on Solve. In this case, he will tell me, huh, I cannot actually find a feasible solution to this. So once I did use this change here, it's no longer solvable in all parts. So they won't converge to a solution as I want to have it. So I can go back and return to the old situation. Solve this again. Okay, now he has a problem. He has to restart with different values. So I could go back to zero, zero here. Run him again. Okay, then zero, zero is starting solution also doesn't work. So I enter some random values here. And use this once more. Now he actually found a solution. So that's actually the problem when you use this version. It could be that on the first trial, you don't get the perfect solution to your problem because as I said, it works iteratively. So it depends highly on your starting values. With some starting values directly finds the optimal solution. So the solution to this system of equations, in some situations, it does not. So if alternatively, I put zeros here. I go back to my original situation, switch this to 
simple LP problem, so to a simplex solver. This usually directly works with every solution, so we can check this here. Oops. Check this here again. I have this, run this with the simplex LP, then he finds a solution. So that's how the solution changes. If I make the changes here. So we can see, depending on which method you use, due to them working slightly differently, could be that he reports an error here. So might be a good idea if you get an error, not directly say, ah, okay, it's not possible, it does not converge, but try different starting values. You saw with my example, I had to try this a few times with some different starting values so that it actually converged. So something like this could always happen to you as well, because especially the GRG nonlinear is highly dependent on the starting values. Simplex LP is a little bit less problematic. That's why I started with the GRG nonlinear that we see the problems with this. And as I said, the simplex LP works a little bit better. And well, that's then all there is on solving or getting the limits of a Markov chain with directly an additional input on how to calculate eigenvalues of a matrix or solving linear systems of equations with the help, both of them, of the Excel solver. Well, that's all there is. So I hope you enjoyed listening to this session. And if you want to see more on statistics in Excel or in general on Excel, free to, free to visit the rest of the course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.